Okay, so back to this scenario. And that means there are no boundaries as well. So I cannot draw a map boundary. There are no static obstacles. So let's say this is me. That's the robot that I need to plan. It's currently oriented anywhere. Doesn't matter. We'll soon change that up. And let's do one thing. Let's just have one obstacle to make the matter simple. And let's call it as a O. So that's my obstacle O. There'll be O1, O2, O3, O4 very soon, but currently let's have just an O. And I ask the same thing that at what speed do I travel, this time velocity, because velocity will be a vector such that I am definitely gonna collide. Now the problem is not easy because the radius of the robot, let us say, so from the center to this thing, is rho r, and the radius of this thing is rho o, and both of them have radius, so it's difficult to solve it geometrically. In robotics, we've got a little trick. In multi-agent simulation, we've got a little trick. I can always deflate the robot to be a point mass, with zero radius and instead I can inflate all the obstacles by the radius of the robot. So that looks anything but circle but it is a circle. So that's rho zero, that's rho r and this is what is rho zero o plus rho r. The radius of the obstacle plus radius of the robot. Uh, that's a little trick that we keep on <laughs> using in robotics. So if the size of the circular robot is bugging you up, just compress the robot to a point mass and inflate everything else by the radius of the robot. So now instead of two variables, I've got just one variable. And if you want to see how does it work, imagine the robot traveling over here. At this point, what distance does it keep? Rho zero plus rho r. So for a second, imagine that the robot is, point robot is here at rho zero plus rho r. Now, similarly, where is the robot rho zero plus rho r? And the visual appeal is over here. So if you don't inflate, this will be the picture. If you inflate, this will be the picture. Both are collision free. If I go, if you go a little bit inside this and the distance is less than rho zero plus rho r, it will collide. If you move a little bit inside here, this will collide. So straight away heuristic, straight away trick, very intuitive. Whenever the size of the robot troubles you, squeeze it to a point mass and inflate everything else. Easy. So from now on, I will not be dealing with this and I will only be dealing with this rho zero plus rho r inflation. Uh, now, at what speed do I need to move such that no collision happens? Now the answer is simple. The velocity can be broken into two components, a speed, which is a scalar and a direction, which is a vector. So at what velocity can I should I travel such that a collision happens, inverted question, I say at what speed should I travel and at what direction should I travel, I break up velocity into scalar quantity which is the magnitude and a vector quantity which is a unit direction, same as potential field. So if I travel here, I'll collide, if I travel here, I'll collide, if I travel here, I will not collide, if I travel here, I'll collide, if I travel here, I'll collide, if I travel here. I will not collide. So now one thing which is a bit hard to do is to draw tangents in an electronic board. I'll still try my best. Oops. Yeah, that looks like a tangent. So If I travel within this angular range, if I travel within this angular range, then I'm definitely going to collide. And if you want, you can actually measure these two angles. So if I, this is 90 degrees 
This is the distance between robot and the obstacle O. So in a right-handed triangle, you know the hypotenuse, you know the perpendicular, and you know the sign formula. So sine of this angle, let's say beta, is equal to rho 0 plus rho r divided by distance between r and o. And by symmetry, this angle will also be beta, and this angle is theta. Theta is the orientation of the line joining R to O. So you've got theta is equal to A tan 2 O Y minus R Y O X minus R X. So any angle which is in the range of theta minus beta to theta plus beta is gonna incur a collision. Any unit vector which has this angle is gonna incur a collision. Now, let me write it down at any speed with that. So let me write it down a little bit more formally. So I say the collision cone defined by the obstacle O is given by any velocity vector V such that there exists a lambda such that Q plus lambda V intersection, the occupancy of the inflated obstacle R is not, is equal, is not equal to null, where this is called as the collision cone for obstacle O. Mm, difficult definition, so let me break it down. RO is called as the regional occupancy or the spatial occupancy of O, which is this entire region. So this entire region is called as the spatial occupancy of O and the spatial occupancy of O can therefore be defined as a set of all points Q such that, how do I define this thing? So the distance of any point here from the center of the robot has a distance value less than R, rho R plus rho O. So a set of all points whose distance is less than rho O plus rho R, the radius of the obstacle plus radius of R. So this becomes a radial occupancy straight away formula. And all that I say is that any vector which when extended with the center as Q, so R is the robot that I'm planning, it's Position is Q and the origin is probably somewhere around over here. So that's the origin, that's the x-axis, that's the y-axis. So all these vectors are... So Q plus a random unit vector here, so let's take a random unit vector here. So if I extend this up, it should go inside obstacle. That's my definition of a collision cone. So if this is V, the extended version of it is lambda times V. So which point is inside the obstacle? Q plus lambda times v. So q plus lambda times v is inside obstacle. So when you take the intersection of 
the spatial occupancy of the obstacle O and if you take the intersection of this line with this circle so what is it the intersection between this line and the circle has a collision so that's the equation of a line that's the equation of a circle and the line and the circle they intersect so this line any general line and circle intersect so if this line and this circle they intersect that means the intersection is not null that's how i call as intersection that's what i call as collision checking by saying the intersection doesn't happen so for collision the intersection should be not null or the line should coincide with a circle that's a line and that's a circle so if any extension of this line intersects with the circle then i say it's collision cone that means it is likely to collide now one thing that I promised and I did not do is that I said that I will consider the velocity of the different agents and I did not do that so now let me have the same thing now I'll not draw a separate so it's a robot R at a position Q and this is the obstacle O and I'll just draw it as rho O plus rho R Now what I say is that this obstacle O also has a velocity vector and because it also has a velocity vector so it is probably moving at any general velocity direction say V. Okay now what do I do because now my calculations don't hold good. And because my calculations don't hold good, I'll have to do something about it. All I know is that this is the collision cone. And I'll mark it as an obstacle, so black. This complete cone is black. Till infinity. So this is the collision cone of the obstacle O. Now the only thing that you need to say is that it's similar to radius, it was causing a trouble so I squeezed this thing and I inflated the other by the radius of the robot. If velocity causes trouble to you, the only thing that you need to say is velocity is the one that's causing a trouble to me. So I say, I say that it's a relative velocity. So that means previously I say the velocity cannot be collision cone of O. And now I say the relative velocity cannot be collision cone of O. So that's all. And we've done a lot of exercises in the formative years of education about what is relative velocity, what is, how do I handle it up. So you study everything in terms of a relative frame of reference and all the formulas they naturally hold good except for wherever you have the speed you would say the relative speed so my formula remains exactly the same i say relative speed cannot be collision cone of o or i say so what is the relative speed it is my speed minus the speed of the obstacle so it's my speed so I'm defining speeds of all velocity obstacles. So my speed or all, all the speeds which lead to obstacles or all, all the speeds which incur a collision, that's a set of velocity obstacles. Relative speed, my speed minus the speed of the obstacle. The speed over here, V, now I will have to annotate a O over here because anything annotated with O is this thing. So this should be equal to collision cone of the obstacle O. Um, so just to let you know what is it, this is all the velocities, my absolute velocities, this is all my absolute velocities which result in a collision. And this is what I need to calculate.
this is in general term called as the velocity obstacle for the obstacle O. This is velocity of VO and my assumption said that it's known and this is what we defined previously as the collision cone. So, if I take this equation and I solve it up further, I get a obvious relationship that what I need to calculate velocity obstacle of O is equal to collision cone of O plus VO. So, that's my straight away definition. Now, unfortunately, this is a set. It's a set of all velocities that cause a collision. This is a set. It's a set of all these things that you see around highlighted over here. And this is a scalar. And in mathematics, a scalar cannot get added to a set. So I say this, and this is the Minkowski's addition. Mm, don't get frightened by it. So I take the same example of a linear case, one dimension. So I say that Suppose velocity obstacle were 2 to 10. Oops, that I need to calculate. So, suppose the collision cone happened to be 2 to 10 and velocity by which this one was moving happened to be 3. So, and let's say the velocities are discrete. So, it's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So Minkowski's addition will be add this three to all the numbers. So velocity obstacle will be three plus two five, three plus three six, three plus four seven. And of course, if it's not discrete, then it will simply become three plus two five to ten plus three thirteen. That's how it goes on. So. Minkowski addition is nothing but add the scalar to each and every item of this vector and if this is a set then add all the numbers over here to all numbers over here so all combinations of values possible luckily this is a scalar in our case and it's a vector in our case it's a single number it's a single entity so what do I do I add this vector to this so it's this collision cone shown in black let me highlight it up even further so it's this black region Till infinity plus this vector shown in blue so just take any number here let's start over from this thing here just take any number here and add this blue part so this little distance will get added up so this point will get transformed over here 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 all these points will get transformed by VO And what you will get is exactly the same shape, exactly the same shape. Except for everything will move by VO. So. So conventions again, so this is what is the collision cone of O and this red one is what is velocity obstacle of O. The only thing that I changed was instead of speed, I made use of relative speed and then everything up followed and of course this is also Minkowski's subtraction. That's also a Minkowski subtraction and this is not a scalar, my bad. So this is a single entity. That's like saying a single speech, a single entity.